Welcome to JMW's Inside Man YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the channel. Now, Richard Parkinson is a partner within JMW Solicitors and works in the commercial law department. So, Richard, I never thought you and I would be sat here talking about a thumbs up emoji, uh, but there's been a case in Canada, hasn't there? What's happened? Yeah, um, what's happened here is we've got a, a contract for a fairly sort of banal contract for the sale of some flax, which is a crop. Um, and what's happened is that the buyer decided to send a photo of the completed contract to the guy who was selling the the, uh, the flax to him and said, please, can you confirm the, the contract for the flax? Now, the seller has responded by sending a thumbs up emoji. Um, and following that, the seller then didn't um, deliver the flax. The price of flax went up and the buyer was somewhat disgruntled, thought he'd had a contract in place and sued the seller for about $82,000, which is about £50,000. Um, and so that then went to court. Now, the court had to look at whether or not that thumbs up emoji was enough to form a contract. Was it acceptance of the, of the, of the contract? And the court looked at it and said, well, there's enough here. It's common emoji that's used. Um, yes, yeah, we think that's enough for there to be a contract that's formed. The seller said, well, my, my thought is that I was merely saying, I've received this contract, I'll look at it and I'll come back to you. But the court rejected that and said, no, it's fairly common these days that people accept that a thumbs up is affirmative of what, you, what you've done. You've done enough there to form a contract. And I appreciate this is over in Canada and we're in the England and Wales jurisdiction, but more generally, you know, does that pe mean people need to be very, very careful? I mean, Richard, you owe me a million pounds, thumbs up back from you, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm going to be very careful what I do in the hands here. Um, but I, I don't necessarily think it's changed too much, really. Even here in England, I think probably if you look at what you need for a contract, you need an offer, you need an acceptance, you need an intention to create legal relations. So I, th I think firstly, here we've got a business transaction. We've got a, you know, it's uh, two companies dealing together. Um, so you, you've got that sort of perception that there is an intention to create legal relations here. And there was an offer made in terms of sending over the contract to say, you know, hey, here's, I want to buy this stuff, can you confirm it? And then it was responded to with a thumbs up emoji. Now, Quite often, people think that in order to have a contract, you've got to have one. You know, you've got to have something signed. You've got to have a beefy contract that's about, you know, two or three or even 50, 60 pages worth of legal jargon in there that's signed off by people. But you don't need that. As I say, you only need it off that acceptance and um, an intention to create legal relations. You also need other, one other thing. You need consideration. You need value to passing between people. But in terms of most commercial transactions, that's not really too much of an issue in most circumstances. So here you've got that. So contracts can be formed very, very informally and very easily. And it's a trap that a lot of businesses can fall into. And you mentioned the trap that businesses can fall into there. How can you and the commercial law team at JMW help businesses? Well, Firstly, we're always here to sort of advise businesses in relation to sort of any contracts that they're wanting to enter into, and also their contracting processes, how to make sure that their terms and conditions are the ones that, that are the ones forming the contract. But I think there are a couple of things that you can take away in terms of general things. If you don't want to be bound by a contract, be clear that you're not you know, subject to contracts. What the seller here should have done was rather than going back with a flippant thumbs up emoji, should have really gone back and said, I've received it, I'll have a look at it and I'll come back to you. Or maybe a thumbs up received, I'll have a look at it. But the the context around it, taken from, you know, 100 people looking at it, I th I'd say that, sort of, you know, 90, 95% of those people would have said that this guy's accepted the accepted the offer that's being made. So I think the the takeaway for businesses, be very clear when you when you're getting towards something that could look like a contract to people um, and someone's making an offer and you're discussing something, just to be clear that, you know, this is going to be subject to contracts, 
you know, until we've signed a contract, I'm not going to be bound by this. So it's, it's that sort of behavior that companies really need to get into and drill into the sales teams and their buyers as well. Richard, thank you for your insight. And if you'd like to contact Richard and the commercial law team here at JMW Solicitors, you can email insideman at jmw.co.uk or call 0161 82 81 999. Please also subscribe to the JMW Inside Man YouTube channel for the latest legal news, hints and tips. I'm Dominic Walker, JMW's Inside Man.